Hello guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use the Matrix Photoshop Action. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use this photo here as an example for a demonstration of the action. So the way the action works is you open your photo, you simply brush your subject with a color and just play the action. And here's the effect that the action creates. So as you can see what the action does, the action creates this effect inspired by the latest Matrix movie uh, poster effect and as you can see there is a lot of details and the results that you get are fully layered so there is a lot of options for you to customize the results after the action is finished the text here is a fully layered text layer so you can use your own font and any font settings and your own text right and the action is also made so that every time you run the action you will get a unique result even if you use the same brushed area Right, so I'm just gonna close down these two windows now. And after you open your photo in Photoshop, before we get started, there are just a few things you should check just to make sure that the action will run without any errors. So the first thing you should check is that your photo is the background layer. So it should be called the background and have this little lock icon. And if it happens that you have something like this or anything else, just go to the layer menu and choose the background from layer. Then go to the image mode and make sure your photo is the RGB color mode 8-bit scan. You can also check the image size from here. So for best results, you should use the images that are run from 35 to 55, 100 pixels wide or high. All right? Now to load the action, you go to the window, actions, click on this menu icon over here and choose load actions. And now just select the action from a folder according to a Photoshop version. You select the action file, choose load, and the action will appear here in your actions panel. You'll see the main action here, the matrix action, and also the update sharpening action. All right, so what you have to do now is to go to the layer, new layer to create a new layer, and name it brush. It's important that you spell this correctly, so all letters lowercase, because otherwise the action won't work. And choose OK. And now while the brush layer is selected, all you have to do is to pick the brush tool, you can just hit B on your keyboard, right click and inside the canvas, you pick a soft round brush, you can use any color here, color pick doesn't matter, and you simply brush your subject with the color just like that. And if it's easier for you to fill in your subject with the color, what you can also do is to select your background layer here, your photo layer, and then just make a selection of your subject using the maybe select subject uh, automatic selection or you can make a selection using the quick selection tool or the magic wand tool or any other tool you feel comfortable with using and once you have that selection you just select the brush layer and fill the selection where the brush layer is selected all right so it's important that you have this color fill on your brush layer so i've already done the brush before so i'm just going to open up my psd file all right here it is so once more it's important that you have this color fill on the brush layer. And before I play the action, I just want to expand a little bit this canvas size so I have more space around the subject on the left, right, and top sides. Right? So I'm just gonna go to the image, canvas size, and just gonna increase the width for uh, 750. So that. And I'm gonna go to the image, canvas size again, and this time I'm just gonna click here. Uh, to select in which direction I wish to expand the canvas because I want to expand the canvas only at the top side. So I'm just going to click here and I'm going to increase for 250. Just like that. It's always better that you have more space around your subject before playing the action because you can easily cut off the empty space after the action is finished. Otherwise, you may end up having the sum of the effect details cut off. Alright, so to select the action and just gonna click play and the action is stopped once with a message asking you to do some quick things. So I'm just gonna fasten the video here and I'm going to get back when the message shows. Alright, so here we got a message. It says in the next pop-up window, choose the string PSD file that can be downloaded and click open. Choose continue to proceed. So choose continue here and select the string PSD file that can be download, choose open. And now we got another message, it says now using the move tool, hold click anywhere inside the canvas and drag the string layer into your photo document. Make sure that string covers the complete canvas, then play the action again. Choose stop to proceed. So you choose stop, and using the move tool, you just click and hold and drag this text layer into your photo document. Alright, and you just position it so it covers the whole canvas. 
you also be able to modify these later so it's not that much important and it's gonna uh, position it like this and all you have to do now is just click play in the action again and I'm going to fasten the video here once more and get back when the action is finished and then I'm going to go throughout all the layers to show you how to customize the results that you get. Alright so the action has just finished so I'm just gonna close these actions panel for now and I'm going to expand a little bit this layers panel. Alright just like that. So as you can see the complete effect is uh, layered and I'm going to start customizing these effects from the bottom. So the first layer we got here is the background layer, so this is the original for the layers, so I'm just going to skip over it. And the next layer we got here is the background color. So you just double click on this color box here, and what you can do is you can use any color for the background. Right? And what you can also try to do is to pick some color from your subject. This usually works very well. Alright? So I'm just going to use this color here. I'm going to choose OK. And you also notice that this layer has the gradient overlay effect. So when you double click there, what you can do is you can modify this effect. So it's giving the uh, some subtle lighting to the effect, as you can see at the middle of the photo. And what you can do is you can increase the opacity to intensify this light, or you can also uh, scale the lighting. And you can, by default it's set to reflected, you can change this to radial if you wish to, to have the lighting coming from the middle of the photo, or you can set the liner and then just set the angle from which you wish that the lighting comes to the photo. Right, I'm just gonna keep this default. And the next we got here is the vignette layer. So this layer is making these uh, darkening of the edges. So what you can do is you can increase this opacity so to change the opacity of any layer, you can just click on the word opacity and drag it aside. Or you can click on this little arrow here and then just move this slider left or right. Okay? So in this example, I want to have a clean background. So I'm just going to hide the vignette layer uh, for this example. Alright, so the next we got here are the waves. Okay? And if I hide all these layers and start turning them one by one, you'll see how each of these layers affects the design in a different way, so all these waves are different. And if it happens that you don't like some of the uh, effects, you can simply hide the layer. Or what you can also do is you can select the layer mask, pick a brush tool, pick a soft brush, set foreground color to black, and you can simply brush over any part of the any wave layer that you wish to remove. Just like that. Alright? What you can also do is you can change the opacity of the waves and you can also transform it. So you select the wave layer, you press Ctrl Command T, you can scale it up, rotate it, and make any other transformation changes. You can also move them around. Okay. So there's a lot of options here. You can experiment with these to create something different. And I'm just gonna keep all these default. Alright, and the next we got here is the subject layer. And when you open the folder, you see there is the main subject layer and the subject stretch. Alright, so this layer is just making the blending of the subject and the effect better. And just gonna keep it default. And here we got the subject layer. So, what you can do here is you can select the layer mask of this layer, you can pick a brush tool, set foreground color to black, and simply remove any parts of the subject to blend it with the effect, just like that. And you also notice that if you Alt or Option click on the layer mask, that this layer mask is removing the subject on certain areas for the blending. So what you can do is you can simply brush with the white color if you wish to reveal any removed part of the subject, just like that. All right? So if you wish to remove any part of the subject, you brush with the black color. If you wish to reveal some of the removed parts of the subject, you brush with the white color. Okay. And next we got here is the string layer. So if I just zoom in, notice the text. And I'm just gonna right click here and convert the text to point text, which is okay. And now I'm just gonna double click on the text layer. I'm gonna use different font. I'm gonna use this one here. And I'm gonna increase the size of the font a little bit. And I'm gonna use a different color. 
choose this one here. Again, you can pick any color from the subject. And I'm just going to increase the line spacing. All right, just like that. And I'm just going to press Ctrl A to make a selection of the canvas and center the text with a photo. All right. So what you can do also, you can change the opacity of the text. And in this example, I want to keep the text subtle. So I using this uh, small text size. If you wish text to be more visible, you can simply increase the size, right? And we also notice that the text has a layer mask. So if you wish to reveal text on some areas where the text is not visible, you simply brush with a white color, just like that. Or if you wish to hide some of the text uh, or certain areas, you simply brush with a black color. Just like that, okay? And the next we got here is the color look. So this layer is giving a nice color to the whole effect. So just gonna post it just a little bit. And the next we got here is the overall contrast. So how you adjust the contrast is you simply change the opacity of this layer. Right, so I'm going to boost the contrast. Just like that. And here we got the overall brightness. So when you double click here, Using these five sliders, you can adjust the brightness. So this one here is going to boost the shadows. This one here is going to boost the highlights. This one is going to boost or fade the mid-tones. And this one here is fading the shadows. This one here is fading the highlights. So by default, the shadows are faded a little bit. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And the next we got here is the aura vibrance and saturations. So you double click here. And using these two sliders, you can increase or decrease the vibrance and the saturation of the photo. Gonna push them both a little bit. And last we got the overall sharpening here. So to increase the sharpening, you simply just increase the opacity of these layers. So you're controlling the sharpening with the opacity. And if you can make any changes to the effect, like I did, for example, I removed some areas or transformed some details, or you have adjusted the text, or literally make any other changes, what you need to do is to create this layer again. So to do so, you simply select the update sharpening action and click play. And the action is going to create a new overall sharpening layer. I'm just going to increase the opacity to 100%. Okay. And as I have mentioned at the beginning of the video, the action is made so that every time you run the action, you will get unique result. So if you simply remove this folder and just play the action again using the same brush, layer, I'm going to get unique result. So the action always creates unique waves variation. All right. So that's it. And let's just quickly check the before and after. So this is the before. And this is the after effect. All right. So I hope you understood everything. But if you still need any help or you got any questions, feel free to contact me anytime via my Invato profile page. Thanks for watching.